working on them. And so after you're done with your handles on the, the table and then you would attach 15 handles to a little bucket and you're ready to throw your, your mugs. And so today I'm going to give you a little demo on mug making. Uh, this is a finished one. Um, some things I want you to know about the finished one here. Okay, One is the handle should not go above the mug itself. Okay. Um, the reason for that is I should be able to set this mug upside down, okay, and so it doesn't roll around. And if I, if that handle goes above, it rocks, and it also puts pressure and strain on this handle for it to break later, okay. And so it can get close, it can touch, but it shouldn't really go over. The other thing, if it's over, it will want to, to tip down when you pick it up, okay. And so you want it to, to be level, and you want the bottom of this handle to be about a half an inch or more. So you want this to be about a half an inch or more under the rim, okay? Uh, if, it's, if it's above, then it really wants to swing down when you pick it up, okay? The other thing is the handle is typically, uh, sometimes in, with beginners, pulled out too far, and then it seems really heavy because you're holding it way out here, you got this big fulcrum, and it, 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 you got more weight. It feels like it's, it's stronger. So ideally, we want to pull the handle so that we can get three fingers into it, tight and snug, so in the end, we have a, a nice handle that will fit two to two and a half fingers after it's fired and shrunk. Okay? Right now, this mug feels fairly large for my handle, for my hand, but, and that's what it should feel like. Just, oh, it's just a touch big, because as, it, as we fire and everything, it will shrink to the perfect size to fit your hand. Okay? So that's a big thing here, why, when I start talking about when you went four fingers on the inside, uh, so that it fits your hand. Okay? And so that's a big part of, of what we're going to do today. And so um, to start here, I'll, I'll throw uh, a mug. I would like you to use a pound and a half. Uh, if you are one that wants a little bit more of a dainty pot, go a pound and a quarter. Okay? Um, I'm one that likes to have big mugs. Okay? Uh, and my professor in college and I would kind of get into these little uh, spat arguments about that uh, because um, she liked little dainty cups. Well, she was a little dainty lady, so she made little dainty cups. Me, I made big, manly, broad cups, because that was more me. Um, and so, you need to make cups that are, are you, okay? And so, um, they should should have a, a semblance of you. And so, if you want a smaller cup, go with about a pound and a quarter, and that will, will bid you well, okay? I'm using a pound and a half, um, and I'm throwing them very, very thin. And so, even if you use a pound and a half, your cups are probably going to be a little bit smaller. But make sure you weigh them out, they have to be exact, okay? Don't use more. If you use more than a pound and a half, you're gonna have this ginormous sky, okay? And we're not making those, okay? We're making mugs. All right. So, beginning part is is pretty easy uh, in what we do. I gotta get to the part where we drill it and open it. Okay. So now, when we're ready to drill it, we want to drill to a quarter of an inch thick, okay? And so we're not leaving that half inch thick like I've been preaching to you for years now to do. I want it to be a quarter of an inch thick because we're not going to trim a traditional foot on these, okay? If you look at this, this pot over here and look at the bottom, you're going to love trimming these things, okay? Because all we do when we trim them is we trim it flat, bevel the edge so it's up about a quarter of an inch on the side, and that is it, okay? Honestly, I don't even chuck my, my mugs down when I trim them. They're that quick. Um, and so uh, you just have to slant it at an angle, and this edge should be a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. Okay, So we don't uh, glaze the bottom or this little side bevel, and that's it. Okay, um, So in a mug, you want a wide base so it's sturdy and it's stable, um, and a foot just makes it a little bit more tipsy. Um, so drill it to a quarter of an inch. Okay, If you're unsure what that feels like, take your needle tool and stab it. And, and mark it with your finger and pull it out uh, to kind of see if it is a quarter of an inch. And then I want you to open it the width of your four fingers. This is where we start to custom make our mugs. So I want you to make it so your four fingers fit in there snugly. Okay? And, and at that stage, you pull it to the, the size you want. Then it's extremely important, since we're not trimming the bottom of this, really, that we compress this bottom. And I want a really sharp corner here, so take your fingernail and kind of indent that corner so it's a sharp 90 degrees, and then take one of your ribs and compress that bottom, 
Okay. Now, this rib is wider than, than half my pot, so if I get this side caught in over here, it's going to gouge it. So I'm really kind of leaning it to the right side, because when I throw, everything happens on the right side of the wheel. So I'm first kind of compressing the outside. And when I want to do the middle, I can flip it over to this more curved side here, so I don't have to worry about it gouging the middle here. Okay, so I'm just compressing that nice and flat and smooth. Okay. I'll sometimes then make it a little design or decoration in there. When I was little, I had a uh, little uh, uh, mug that I used for, for hot, uh, hot chocolate. And it was a little uh, Nestle's Quick Rabbit. And on the bottom, it had a little smiley face. And so this is my little smiley face for people because they're looking inside that cup when, they're, when they finish it off. So you got to give them a little smiley face. Um, but you can just, just make it flat there. And then at this point, it's just normal throwing, just a claw pull and pull up. And we're just trying to make a cylinder. Now, the one thing I've noticed is students are struggling making it go straight up and down. And the reason for that is if my outside finger is lower than my inside finger, I'm going to make a bowl. And um, what we want to do is pinch and then pull our outside finger up just a little bit and then kind of lock everything in together and pull up. What some students are doing is they're pinching and pulling up. Well, if you, if you do that, that inside finger is level and that's going to want to push it out. So I want that outside finger to come up a little bit. So I pinch, pull it up a little bit, and then lock my hands and pull my hands the rest of the way. Every time, compress your rim. This is vitally important. I use just my finger on this right now. And I, right now, I'm compressing that flat, but later on I'm going to talk about the importance of that rim here. So I've got one more pull here. All right. Now, at this stage, I want you to become masters with the rib here in ceramics too. And so I want you to learn how to use a rib for everything. And so we're going to use this rib to make the sidewall straight. And so you're going to make five mugs for this project. The first one I want it boring you might say, but very standard, straight up and down. Okay. So I'm just going to hold this rib here and where there's a gap, I'm going to press out to that gap. So my inside finger is kind of locking on. Notice my thumb is trying to connect this outside rib or my hand. I don't want to just have this free flowing. So I want to connect those hands if possible. And so I'm just pressing that clay out to meet that rib. And I can just bring my finger up on the inside. Now at the point here, my finger is like right here. So I, I'm running out of rib. So I can just lock those two together and just continue to come up. The nice part about with the rib is I can go down. I can pull up and down with my fingers. So my finger is kind of going down right now. I'm just making it all smooth. Okay. So for your first mug, that's what I want. Okay. Just a nice, straight, flat sided mug. Okay. I'm going to talk about now the rib, the rim of this. The most important part about a mug is the rim. Okay. Um, I have hundreds of mugs from other potters that I admire, from friends of my, uh, mine that are potters, and it's amazing in my cabinets how some of those mugs always find their way to the front of the cabinet. They're constantly being used. And so a while ago I, I kind of took a note of what was features about those that, that was uh, drawing me to use those all the time. And the biggest one that I noticed was the rim. If your rim is flat, your lip sits on that rim. Okay. What we want to do is we want to invite that lip into the cup so that it's easier to drink out. So it spills out of the cup and also so that the liquid gets cut in a, in, at, the, at the tip of your, your mug and doesn't just drizzle down the side. And so to do that, instead of me compressing it flat, I want to angle this. And so I'm just taking my thumb here so it doesn't get wider, angling my finger and just beveling it just a little bit. And that makes a huge, huge difference. And so I'm just going to take a little towel here, and I'm fine with this as long as I don't start seeing towels wind up in the, uh, the clay bin. Okay? But I'll just kind of dip that towel in there, and I'm just going to kind of fold it over on itself. So I make a, a little strip of towel here. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and lap it over top. Now I use like a chamois in my own studio. This works just as well. 
And so now I can smooth that rim out even more. And that little difference makes a huge difference. Your, your lip isn't feeling like it's getting cut by grog and stuff, um, and it's much smoother. Okay? So we want that nice smoothness to that rim. Okay? Um, that's going to help. And at this stage, you would be done. You would run a wire under it, you would slide your mug off. If you feel it's a little precarious, you can take it off in the bat, but you guys should be at the stage where we can take that off um, and put it on a styrofoam bat. Okay? Now, one of like that. And then the rest, I want you to do some things with. Okay? I want you to try different things with texture, with form, using ribs. And so I'm just going to kind of just play around with this one here as long as it lets me before it wants to collapse and kind of show you different options. Um, so you can start to think about that anyway. Not to copy me, but to start to think about what else could you do.